what's in the dungeon? Um, I'm Dex, and it's been a little bit of time since we've done a video. Uh, today we're getting ready for a whip practice. Whip practice is the third Saturday afternoon of every month, unless I have a conflict. In February, I did have a conflict. We were uh, dancing a, a ballroom dance competition in Atlanta the third Saturday of the month, so that slid to the fourth Saturday. But for planning purposes, put it in your calendar as a recurring event every third Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the information and the link to uh, to the practice is on my FetLife profile, Dex. And you'll see it there every month. Uh, today's video is just going to be a little bit of review. Uh, in reality, we finished the bulk of the content for the Whips in the Dungeon series looking at all different classes of whips, basic techniques for throwing them up through intermediate and advanced. And so today we're getting ready for a practice. Uh, it's important you practice to develop, to develop that muscle memory and work on your eye-hand coordination, uh, depth perception, finesse, there's all these things. So I'm just gonna start today with a dragon tail. And before you practice every time, do some stretching, uh, you know, just, just some basic movement, uh, get your rotator cuff loosened up a little bit, whether you're throwing one-armed or two-handed. I do recommend that you practice with your offhand because throwing with your offhand is going to make your dominant hand uh, better, quicker. But uh, for a brief, brief review, the four techniques that we teach for beginners or even intermediate is the bow and arrow over the shoulder and over the shoulder you're just going to drag it off your shoulder and point it straight. I teach it with a thumb push. You could do it with a handshake or another type of grip. Okay, over the shoulder, horizontal and horizontal is what you're going to see most of your signal whip throwers throwing for a dynamic style with a signal whip. It can be thrown with a dragon tail equally well. When you move to a bull whip and a snake whip, horizontal is more challenging uh, because of the fall and the effect of gravity on that class of whip. So you do have to speed up your stall speed a lot. The, the speed of the whip would increase a lot with a snake or a bull. So I recommend not using horizontal with a snake or a bull. And then the final technique we taught was what I call the forward figure eight. That can be thrown with any class of whip, but it certainly accommodates itself well to a snake and a bull whip. So then when we move to two hand throwing, which is, toward, is another part of the journey, as I was saying, you're gonna practice a lot with your off hand because all the time you practice with your non-dominant hand is going to make your dominant hand seem smarter. Okay, so throw all those classes of whips with your non-dominant hand and practice all of those techniques. It may feel a little bit awkward, uh, but it's going to make you a better whip thrower even if you end up just throwing single-handed. Then when you move to two-hand throwing, you have to abandon the bow and arrow, but you can come off the shoulder, either with together timing, or what I call staggered timing, where in my mind, I'm just counting it as one, two, one, two. Uh, distributed timing is more balanced, it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Where you're throwing on the one and the three, a little bit um, farther gap between that timing. Then the four count Florentine is just the forward figure eight, but it's thrown with both hands. And I personally always start my non-dominant hand first into the forward figure eight. I think with a dragon tail and a signal, it would be possible to do a six count Florentine. I don't know how accurate you would be. It would certainly take a lot of practice, 
I'm limiting my single tail throwing two-handed to this four count Florentine for now. When I'm throwing floggers, I do do a six count Florentine, but that's kind of it for technique. So once you've done that, then it's just practice. Uh, as I've gotten more advanced, I've incorporated dynamic footwork into my throwing, so I'm not just standing still. Uh, most people that are throwing are either using uh, uh, a first position in ballroom where your feet are together their, or their feet are, are weighted balanced under either shoulder or they'll have one foot in front of the other foot sort of in a fourth position. Uh, the least amount of parallax would be the foot that's on your dominant throwing hand being ahead with your body slightly turned that's going to reduce parallax into your target as you're targeting uh, in the dungeon. Uh, that's kind of it for an intro to our whip practice today. Hope everyone can make it. Uh, as always, thanks for watching Whips in the Dungeon.